guys. I think I've got a sneeze going. <laughs> you know that feeling. Hey, um, still not a lot of shop time, and I've just done a what I call a very insignificant, probably not really very interesting project, but I decided to video it just for the hell of it. The uh, end of Bits 03, I showed a gooseneck which I wanted to make use of and all I've had, to, well say all, what I had to do is to make an adapter for the bottom and an adapter for the top so I've just uh, documented what I did and it was really somewhat thrown together I wouldn't say there was any great pretense at super accuracy I made one or two shortcuts just really to get a result appearance was not that important I'm afraid function was everything um, the first stage was making a 5 8 28 TPI female thread and I had a very a very old uh, threading tool which I'd ground long ago it wasn't very good but rather than mess around trying to regrind I just I used it as was I just set a, an angle uh, just right to suit the tip uh, but uh, cutting that thread was so close in everything was all crowded in I couldn't really video it very easily so uh, the first slip is just the end result so we skip the rest of that and then I just go through stage by stage putting it together and finally towards the end at the end a couple of things I just got <laughs> which fairly insignificant in some respects but quite pleasing in others so I'll cover those briefly at the end all right so let's oh I nearly forgot uh, just to say thank you again I keep forgetting to thank everybody who's subscribed I sort of got used to it take it for granted which is not right I appreciate it greatly anyway let's get on with the uh, silly little project <laughs> Well that's the female thread done. You can probably just about see some of it. And uh, the angle of this, as I said, is a bit odd because of the way it ground. It's not perfect, it really needs improving, but it did the job. And I wasn't really quite sure what to start with as a bore. So I put a 7 16 drill down there and basically kept working at the thread until I got the uh, male thread to fit and this is only about an inch and three quarters long this piece of material uh, which I'll polish up a bit you know, in a minute I'm going to turn it round and we'll put an eight mil thread the other end and that will deal with the attachment for the mag base just finishing taking this down to uh, nominal 8 mil should equate to uh, 315 yeah, 315 and two tenths. <laughs> uh, take another, take another thou there just to give me a bit of leeway. Right, that should suffice. Just want to put a bit of chamfer on there, I think. Have to uh, cheat a bit and make this tool do the job. Very close to the chuck jaws here. That's the trouble with using scraps. I don't like. Uh, I don't like having 
things right in the front of the jaws, but I haven't done it up too tight. Only need a touch on here. Don't actually need a whole lot of length on this, so I should probably probably use a lock nut. Um, I might just be able to increase that chamfer, but I may not bother. This is functional. Just finishing a little bit of thread relief. That'll do, I think. Actually, that's a thin parting blade that needs grinding. I just I've only got a die nut for this M8. I'm just getting a start. I can't go too ambitious on it because I haven't got a very good hold in the chuck. That may well be enough. Let's see. I've got the back gear in so it's um, I may finish that out of the chuck, I think, actually. Oh, i got a thread on that now. I finished it out of the chuck because it was wanting to slip a little bit. So I'm going to use the nut and soft washer from the uh, original post that was in there. And I was going to put some flats on this so I could use a wrench, but I think because the thread's a little bit tight. I'm going to finish it off this way. So there we are, a bit ugly. Now see if we can get the gooseneck in there. I'm not sure whether I cut the thread quite deep enough in there, but as long as I can do this up, whoops, I'm doing the old out of frame trick, aren't I? As long as this will go in it looks as I might be able to ease that a bit further with a my wrench in the leather. I might have been short of one thread in there but anyway that's in there nice and tight and seeing as this is usable you know through 360 degrees I don't really need to adjust that in. The next thing now is um, make a male piece to go in there, get that threaded and then on the top probably leave what would basically be a threaded boss um, so I can use that to fit different things whether we're talking about a lamp indicator or probably I might put a ball, ball joint on there so it'll give me another camera option so we'll see. Suck it and see. Now I'll do something for the top. Top of this gooseneck. There's actually plenty of female thread in there. Probably about five eighths. So we'll probably give it about a half inch. And starting off here, this is a piece of three quarter. 
So I've uh, got to face that, turn it down to uh, just under 5 eighths. The old thread is actually comes up at uh, about 615. So we'll probably head for that. It doesn't have to be a particularly particularly tight fit. We'll just face this off. And uh, take this down if I can find the darn tool. And set the stop somewhere around there. So I've got to take off about 66 thou, so we'll touch off. Take a 10. I never know with these bits of scrap what the hell they are. <laughs> it seems to be half reasonable. So I'll get that down to size. One more pass should do, I think. Bear in mind that this, like so many things, is not made to be pretty. It's functional. So we'll set up for some threading. I'll put in a thread end relief. As usual, spindle handle. Just wind in a little bit of relief. This is not a terribly deep thread, so uh, you need really go in very far. Make it slightly generous. Uh, that should be that should be plenty. Just doing a scratch driven, a hand driven scratch test. It should be alright, but uh, you always check just to see. the back gear in anyway as I think I just said so uh, we'll run at slowest 
Well, the indicator gets in the way a bit, but uh, probably still see what's happening here. Make sure the back gear is engaged. I'll go for it. As usual with a fine thread, the uh, numbers take a long time to come round. I'll carry on and get closer to the end. I didn't take many passes. <coughs> I think we should be good to go. It's slightly awkward. I have to use the uh, Handle in the spindle again. Just goes slightly tight there. Only a little. Oops, only a little bit. This is uh, slightly awkward. Probably just take one more pass to clean it up again. Well, optimistically, I thought I could use the deeper thread in that top of the gooseneck, but although this goes in very freely, quite a long way, it doesn't go all the way, and I think the thread in there is not very good. So, what I'm going to do is to take this down. That's a double mail fitting that used to be in it, goes in easily. So I think we'll come down we'll go, I'm just trying to get that distance. So it means taking a load of that off, which is a bit annoying, but there again it's not a big deal. So we'll just face that off. Put a fresh chamfer on and that should do it. <laughs> it's nothing simple, is it? Try again. Seems wasteful, doesn't it, after all that? Threading? Never mind. I'll put a chamfer on that and see how uh, see how well it works. And see how it is this time. Let's put the handle in again. Might be zoomed in a bit much. Yes, there we go. That's all the thread we need anyway. Just seemed a good idea to make it longer. So we'll turn this round. I don't want this to be overly long, but equally the length is not too important. So I'm going to put a thread in the other end. Uh, I'm not sure yet, watch yet, just a thread that I can use conveniently to put different things on. Well, I had to get rid of a pimple this end, so I just face that down and put a chamfer on. And uh, I think I'll probably put 
M8125 in here. Although this piece is still fairly long, uh, what I might do, I think, is because it <coughs> it is shorter now. But if we give about a half inch thread in here, and then probably around this area, um, center drill, sorry, uh, cross drill, and have a flat, um, which would give me a side access for the. An M8, never know, it might be useful. Reiterating, this isn't has to, this doesn't have to be pretty. <laughs> function, function. And just spot this. Sure, where this is a totally. This is a one of those cheapy drills. Sometimes they're not overly straight. Yeah, not a not a very good drill. I just carried on with it, and uh, I got it. Got about an inch, just just under an inch, which it'll do. So I'll set up the tap. I've added a chamfer lead in, and uh, won't probably thread the whole depth as long as I can go about three quarters, something like that. That's about adequate. I'll just get a bolt and check that for fit. Yeah, <clears throat> it's a pretty, pretty clean thread. A little bit sloppy there, but I say that drill wasn't very good. When I looked at it, the chisel point was rather bad so it did drill slightly oversized not a problem I think I'll keep that at that length and then just do a cross drill here in case it's going to be useful later oh, it's only uh, having this piece being worked on I thought I'd do this cross drill and uh, it may be useful And also because the uh, this letter I drills got a very bad chisel point, I'll go through with the 1764 first. That's better. Tighten that up enough. Yeah, that was actually uh, just catching the bottom of the other hole. And I just realised it was catching. Now we'll pop the letter I in just to clear through. I don't really need to put a flat on here to be honest but 
um, I may do that finally just as a just as a means of um, having a flat there in case I need it. I could power tap this actually with this tap, but I don't know. I prefer to feel it. <laughs> I know lots of folks do do a power tap, but uh, somehow I prefer to feel it on the way through. I thought I might as well tap through and through. You never know, might be useful. Let's take that out and then I'll just mill a flat. In fact, I'll do a flat both sides. I can't quite fit in a half inch cutter, so I'm just using a 716. I think that'll be enough. I'll flip it over and uh, do the other side. It's probably not absolutely centered here, but anyway, this is a bit of rough and ready. <laughs> I think we'll be alright with that. Oh, I think that's enough. Not quite on centre, say so, rough and ready. Well, pretty unexciting mini project. Um, that's worked out all right. It looks a bit funny, but the thread depth on these blocks is only just over a quarter inch, and they use the nut and washer, so I've used the same approach. Uh, so that's done up pretty reasonably. That's gone into the adapter all right. So that lot really is just nice nice and firm. And this end, so we've got this piece, this piece we just finished making. Uh, things that are not absolutely perfect. That uh, 28 TPI thread, that's worked out okay. Um, this cross hole, which may or may not even be used, isn't too bad. I didn't set up for the mill very accurately to get the flats. I think the flats are incidental really. They don't really matter. So I wasn't really taking So I wasn't really taking a huge amount of care up with it. As I say, function. Function is entirely what's needed. Now it looks a bit ungainly, 
But what I'm hoping is that uh, having that M8 thread available, that I can put on anything else with an M8. So I may fit up, try a lamp on it, um, make a camera mount. I've got a spare ball um, swivel coming. I'm not sure how it's going, what it's going to fit to, or at least how it's going to fit. Uh, we'll see what happens when I get it. <laughs> and then I can probably also f fix up something on here for uh, DTI if it's any use. I mean the whole thing's pretty long but it may just be it may just be now and again that uh, it'll have a reach that'll be useful. I might even put find a way of fitting the Mini Noga on the end here. Anyway, it's really just a case of using the gooseneck for something instead of it lying around doing nothing. So there it is. Most unexciting, just another little something. Um, I may get round to something a bit more substantial if it doesn't get too cold. See how it works out. All right, that's it for now. Well, here was one score which I was rather pleased with. Um, I'd released one of these for the uh, gooseneck job, but I thought I'd get another, replace that, so I've still got a spare. <laughs> these three, not one, these three, were there for 20 bucks, free shipping. So they came today in a small flat rate box. <laughs> I thought that was pretty amazing. So I'm rather delighted I've got the one back that I had used for the gooseneck and I've got two more for which I shall find uses, one of which is probably going to be used on the welding table. The other thing I got through the other day was a bunch of uh, slitting saws. They're used. Um, there's a guy, I can't remember his initials, he puts them up every week just about. I guess they're bought off uh, companies that have used them up to a certain point. So I took a gamble. I got one or two other twos and threes but over time but this was 20. Uh, I think the bidding went up to it's getting on for 50 bucks I think so you'd, you'd take a bit of a chance doing that. But I was really quite pleased. Uh, these are all 5 8 bore, and there's some very nice thin ones, which are good for some operations. Uh, I've just noticed another one here that's a bit dull. But I went through, and most of them are either good or usable. Quite a, quite a good selection. You obviously take a chance getting second-hand used stuff, but... Uh, not bad at all. Anyway, I thought the uh, I thought these were brilliant. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for watching.